This video contains spoilers for episode 8 of Fiona and Kate. You have been warned. Okay, this episode, Jerry, is by far the best episode so far. Not even a competition, hands down, best episode. So let's just get right into it. And right away, we see Simon and Betty together. Is this some kind of alternate universe? Well, no, it's a flashback. And we can already tell because of episode 2, Simon Petrica, when Simon was sitting down with Finn and telling him about Betty and their expedition to Java. But from this first scene, of the very start of the episode, you can obviously tell that their relationship is pretty close. But before we can get into the real meat and potatoes of the episode, we starkly contrast to Simon, Fiona, and Kate walking in a desert, which if it looks familiar, it's the same desert universe we see in the intro, when Fiona and Kate were walking through it, sweating and crying. But this new universe is so desolate and has almost nothing in sight, but Kate is growing increasingly angry at Fiona. But why? Well, let's take a step back to think about it. So you know how Fiona is always overprotective of Cake, especially in the last episode, The Star, with all the vampires. I mean, come on, Cake's got some magic up her paws now. She's no ordinary feline, but Fiona? Still acting like Cake's a normal house cat. Now, I think we all get why Cake's ticked off this time. Even though Fiona's worries come from a genuine place in her heart, Cake has every right to be mad. And especially from the last episode, The Star, where she had a tiny glimmer of an opportunity where the Vampire King was too busy watching Marceline in PP fight to take the crown, and Cake saw it. But then, Fiona just had to step in, and that pretty much causes the Vampire King to spot Cake red-handed. And they end up in this barren wasteland because Fiona mashed the button to teleport them out of there. So when Cake storms off into the desert verse, can you really blame her? I mean, she had one job, get the crown, and Fiona totally ruined it for her. But then, here's the real cherry on top that I didn't notice right away. Cake storms off, right? Fiona's like, be careful, yada yada yada, cause who knows what's out there. There. Huge dramatic cut to the title card, Jerry. Are you feeling the foreshadowing yet? It's like the universe, or at least the script writers, are screaming at us. Who knows what's out there? Jerry's out there. Watch out for Jerry. And oh man, Jerry is out there. And you bet that they should have listened to Fiona, despite her previous attempts. Okay, so then what's after the title card? Surely we go back to this desert verse, right? Wrong. We cut to this mysterious looking mystical place in outer space. By the way, it looked amazing, but what's inside this mysterious mystical building in outer space? A fancy clock, yes, but also the scarab. But what's the scarab doing here anyways, and what is this place? Well, it turns out this is like the cosmic holding cell for cosmic criminals. Because, if you remember, in the previous episode, the scarab got sucked into this blue ball and teleported out of the time room because he was ignoring his cosmic duty, enforcing the rules of other cosmic entities. And he was doing that with the cosmic owl, ignoring the notification several times. So, because he wasn't doing his cosmic duty, he got sent to this cosmic holding cell. But who's in charge of this thing? Well, we find out. And his name is Orbo. Who exactly is Orbo, though? Well, we'll come to find that out real soon. But now we finally go back to this desert verse. And even though we just got done dogging on Fiona for her messing up everything and causing them to be in this universe in the first place, but she's talking with Simon around this fire pit, and she's genuinely sad and just wants Kate to be safe, which totally makes sense. So, sorry, Fiona, for hating on you so much earlier. And oh yeah, Cake finds Bimo. Bimo is alive in this universe. Bimo then tells them that they can find the Ice Crown in the Ice Kingdom. But on their way there, they come across this stone-looking igloo. And Bimo says that's where Jerry lives and that he's a pretty funny dude. So we can probably take Bimo's word for it, right? Right? They finally arrive at the Ice Kingdom. Or at least what's left of it. It's pretty much all melted and filled with a ton of Ice King relics. His band instruments like his maracas and especially his keyboard, which is now all broken. Remember those ninja weapons in Ice King's diary from the Chamber of Frozen Blades episode? Oh, and how can we forget the demonic wishing eye from When Wedding Bells Thaw? If that thing isn't a recipe for chaos, I don't know what is. But then Cake comes across Ice King's tapes. And let's talk about it for a second. These are Ice King's video diaries. Finn and Jake watched them back in the Holly Jolly Secrets Part 1 and Part 2 episode remember? But hold up, let's circle back to Simon. He pieces out, looking super uncomfortable, while Fiona and Cake are cracking up at his tapes, but you notice how their amusement starts to fade? Like, there's a moment where they realize that Ice King's cuckoo levels are off the charts. Even creepy stuff, like that sudden skeleton morph on the tape? What's that about? Well, we find out at the end of this episode. And also, that small little detail where we find out that the Ice King put his crown inside those drums, it actually becomes 
becomes really important. But anyway, Simon reports back and no progress on the crown. Their last Hail Mary is fixing the remote. And guess who speaks up saying they might know someone who can help? None other than Bimo saying that Princess Bubblegum can fix it. And they head towards the Candy Kingdom with Bimo acting as a cute little GPS. However, did you spot the ice crown? It's still there inside the drum set. Fiona looks at the drum set, but does she know that the ice crown is in there? Well, that look on her face might tell us everything we need to know. But as they're heading towards the Candy Kingdom, that iconic picture from I Remember You of that newspaper clipping of Simon finding the Enchiridion, we see that exact same scene play out here as Simon recounts it. Now, one huge thing to point out is that Simon is known for repressing his feelings and not telling the people that he loves how he really feels. We saw it in episode 2, Simon Petrikov, when Simon refused to put the burden of his feelings on Marceline. And now with this new flashback of Betty, before that iconic picture of him in the Enchiridion, we see that he was always like that. You can tell that Simon obviously wants to tell Betty how he feels, but he just can't get it out. That will change very shortly, but before we can get to the best part, they're at the Candy Kingdom. Now this is one of the saddest parts, because now at the Candy Kingdom, they're wondering where Princess Bubblegum actually is. And it turns out, Bimo decides to just go full-on improv and act as Princess Bubblegum. This really just pushed everyone over the line, especially Cake, still blaming Fiona for even being here in the first place. But why is this so sad for Bimo? Well, Bimo does tell them that one day everyone was just a skeleton, and then Jerry showed up. Now, remember what we just saw in Ice King's tape. At the very end for a couple frames, the Ice King and Gunther just turned into a skeleton out of nowhere. So it seems what Bimo is saying is actually true, but why? Again, we'll find out very soon. But this is so sad for Bimo because I feel like that this is a coping mechanism for Bimo. Bimo knows that everybody in the land of Ooh is gone. Bimo refuses to accept it though by filling in their place and acting like all of the characters from the land of Ooh, like we see with Princess Bubblegum. And I think this is a deliberate act because Bimo does acknowledge that everyone is a skeleton. But just before, when Fiona Cake and Simon first met Bimo, Bimo seems pretty confused and doesn't really know what's going on. But now, all of a sudden, Bimo does. And thinking of it like that is really sad. But trust me, those tears will be flowing very soon. Speaking of tears flowing, Fiona breaks down. She's hit her tipping point after being in this universe in the first place, Bimo now telling them that Princess Bubblegum can't fix it, and Cake being so mad at her. I don't think we've ever seen Fiona cry in any of the series, let alone in an all-out breakdown. So it kind of hit me too when I first watched this episode because it's so different for Fiona. But that just goes to show how dire of a situation they're in. Fiona's probably been building up all of this emotion and when her tipping point finally hit, it just spills out. And it's such a profound moment in the series. And we've seen this before, but Simon trying to cheer her up continues talking about his past with Betty. Remember how it broke his crown? Simon mentioned something about a note in that book. Well, we see that note here. It was a note from Betty pretty much confessing her love for Simon. And Simon felt the same way, but he didn't let her know that until he got to the end of the note where Betty says that she was going to go on this six-month trip to the Outback. And with that, Simon knew that he needed to stop her. And this is where it was a little emotional for me with the montage of Simon running trying to find Betty. But this episode is just packed full with emotional moments. But what's crazy is that when Simon first stops Betty from getting on that bus, he still can't open up about how he truly feels to Betty yet. It took her almost actually getting on the bus for him to finally open up to her. And that very moment marked the beginning of their romantic relationship. Now remember how I said this episode was just filled with emotional moments? Well yeah, this next one is no different. Simon's story cheered Fiona up, but it also cheered Bimo up. And he decides he's gonna use his own heart to try and jumpstart the remote for them. So Bimo hooks it up, tries to get the thing going, and bam, it's a no-go. Our little buddy Bimo dies. And what happens next? Cake, hears in her eyes, picks up Bimo and, wait for it, Bimo turns into an alarm clock. An alarm clock. Now I'll explain why Bimo turned into an alarm clock in a second, but Bimo literally sacrificed his own life for people he barely knew. Or if you want to go one step further, Fiona and Cake might have even reminded Bimo of Finn and Jake 
And with that, Bimo knew that it was important for him to do everything he possibly could for them. So, no matter what it took, even Bimo's own life, Bimo decided to try everything to help Fiona and Cake. But why does Bimo turn into an alarm clock after the touch of Cake? Well, we've actually seen this before, and it's like Fiona and Cake got this weird virus-like power that either takes the power out of anything they touch, or shifts them back to their default settings. Remember that time Fiona's cool new weapon became a butter knife, or when a garlic bomb randomly turned into a straight up clove of garlic? Or that time when Cake turned that hot dog night into a normal hot dog? Yeah, we've seen this before. But then Cake has this great idea. She remembers how Bimo mentioned that Jerry was Bimo's friend and that he was pretty funny. So she decides that they should probably break the news to Jerry that Bimo has passed. While they're headed there, they burst into the Cheers theme song. Simon, being a little fed up with the Cheers theme song, asks them if they know any other music. But then Cake starts singing the same tune that she sang when she and Simon first met. Don't you remember? From episode 3, Cake the Cat, after Cake jumped through the portal in the back of Simon's head, and after Simon put the voice collar on Cake so that she could talk, Simon asks how Cake even got here in the first place. Cake responds that she was just following a song. She then hums that song for Simon, and Simon gets really mad. He literally grabs Cake and is like, where did you hear that? Now it all makes sense. Cake just hummed the same tune in this newest episode, Jerry, and and Simon doesn't get mad this time, and he tells them where it's from. Simon reveals it was actually his and Betty's song. That's exactly why Simon got mad at Cake in episode 3, because at that time, it just reminded him of Betty, which at that point was kind of a bad thing because Simon just failed in summoning Betty. Then it's finally revealed who Jerry is. It's none other than the Lich. And similar to how he froze Finn in his tracks in the episode Escape from the Citadel using the icon iconic word fall, he does the same with Fiona Cake and Simon, but with the word cease. But before we can learn anything more about the Lich, we find out what Orbo and Scarab have been up to. Orbo did pull Scarab deeper into this cosmic holding cell, but the big reveal out of all of this is the phone that Orbo's boss uses. Now, the design on this phone is very unique and very interesting. It has two stars on it and two wings, one representing an angel wing and one a devil wing. What do you think that could mean? And will it reveal who the Orbo's boss really is? Let me know what you think in the comments. We're finally back with the Lich, Simon, Fiona, and Cake. And the Lich has a short little speech to Simon, but ends up doing nothing to them and lets them go as his green eye fades away. Now, Simon chalks this up to the Lich being depressed, but that's actually not the case. We've seen the Lich act like this before, and it's because he doesn't have a purpose. Let me explain. If you remember back to Season 5, Episode 1, Finn the Human, we learned that the Lich made a wish to Prismo, and that wish was the extinction of all life, and it got granted. Now, Finn tries to stop him, but his wish ends up creating Farm World. Jake hadn't made his wish yet, and Prismo pretty much walks him through how to make the perfect witch that will return everything to normal. And although they did return to the Ooh universe, and everything seemed normal, Farm World still existed. But if Farm World still existed, then that means that that universe that the Lich wished for, with the extinction of all life, exists as well. And sure enough, it does. This universe that we see in Jerry is that universe. The universe where the Lich wished for the extinction of all life. How do we know that? Two things. We saw our first little glimpse of it with those Ice King tapes, and for the very last few frames, Ice King and Gunther transforming into a skeleton out of nowhere, and then finally, Bimo explaining to them exactly what happened. That out of nowhere, everyone turned into a skeleton. So what exactly happened? Well, that was the exact moment in time where Prismo granted the Lich's wish. The extinction of all light. And in that universe, everybody died. So then how does that explain the Lich here as we see him? And as Simon calls him depressed. And why I don't think he's depressed, he just doesn't have a purpose. Well, Prismo explains it perfectly in the episode Wake Up from Season 6, Episode 1. This is where the Lich is trapped in Prismo's time room, but doesn't hurt anybody inside of the time room. He's just standing still. And Prismo explains that the Lich's role is to cause pure death. And because he can't do that in the time room, he's in a standstill, like a machine with 
without a purpose. And that's why we see him act the way he does in this episode, Jerry. He's not depressed. He literally just has killed everyone in that universe, so he doesn't have a purpose anymore. I would also like to formally apologize for what I said in my analysis of episode 6. At the end of that video, I said that I don't think the Lich is going to play an important part, and at this point, he just seems like a cool little easter egg that we'll see in every single universe. And oh boy, was I wrong. But I'm happy I'm wrong. The Lich in this episode is so scary, and honestly, might rival his performance that he did in Escape from the Citadel. It gave me goosebumps the first time I saw it. Then, out of nowhere, Fiona reveals that she has the Ice King's crown. Remember back when she kind of mysteriously looked at Ice King's drum kit that had the Ice Crown in it? Well, it turns out she did, in fact, take it. But why would she hide it for so long? Well, we've actually seen this a lot recently with Fiona. She doesn't want Simon to go back to the Ice King. Their relationship grew a lot, even in this episode, Jerry. Their friendship grew probably the most out of any episode. And now they're genuinely friends, and Fiona doesn't want Simon to go back to the crazy Ice King that he once was. That's exactly why she hid it. But now, with pretty much no other option and their back up against the wall, she finally reveals that she has it. Simon assures her, however, that everything will be fine. And so, he starts the ritual once again. This time, however, not to reach Betty, but to get Fiona and Cake back into his mind, put the ice crown back on, and return magic to their world. Keep that in mind, though. Simon's intention before he started this ritual was not to contact Betty, but only to put Fiona and Cake back into his head. So he attaches the string to the lich for a power source and begins the ritual. And it looks like it's working. A beam opens up out of the back of his head, and Fiona and Cake jump in, presumably going back into Simon's head. But out of nowhere, the scared up shows up, trying to put a stop to Simon. But before the Scarab can do that, Simon's about to put on the crown, has a flashback of Betty saying goodbye to him, and instead of putting on the crown, that flashback sparks something in him and opened the portal to Golb. We know this because it's obviously red, but we see the geometric shapes that also float around Golb's head, and what seals the deal is when the Lich's eyes illuminate again because this has caught his attention, and his eye turns into the head of Golb. Now, what exactly happened here? How did Simon actually end up opening the portal to Golb after failing two times previously? Well, at first you might say he had that flashback of Betty saying goodbye to him, and that caused him to think about Betty, and therefore the portal to actually work. Because the other two times that he has tried to do this ritual, he has accidentally or purposely thought about Fiona and Kate, causing their portal to open and not Betty's. But this time, we see he remembers Betty, and then a portal opens up. So did he just finally successfully do the ritual? Well, I don't think so. Remember, Simon is about to put on the ice crown, but he doesn't. He gets interrupted by the portal, but if you remember Betty's wish that she made inside of Gulb, it was no matter the cost to keep Simon safe. And putting on the ice crown again would violate that wish. If he put the ice crown on again, he would turn back into the Ice King, and therefore Simon would not be safe. This is what I think happened. As Simon was about to put on the ice crown, that would have violated Betty's wish. So, in order to keep that wish true, Gold Betty had to intervene. And then when the Lich's eye transforms into Gold, that's super interesting as well. Because as Simon pointed out, and as we already know, he was the last scholar of Gold. So is the Lich gonna jump in too, to finally meet his hero, Gold? What do you think? But if you're new to Fiona and Cake, you would know that this episode isn't done. There is an easter egg in every single credit scene of Fiona and Cake, where Fiona Fiona and Kay could dream of something, and that something being different in every single episode. And in this episode, it looks like Golb with two skulls that resemble the Lich. Now this Golb is Golb Betty, because we see the strings on the pyramid part of the top of the head. As for the two Lich skulls, I honestly don't really know what that could mean. Please let me know what you think in the comments. But if you didn't know, I try and do analyses and deep dives of each Fiona and Cake episode as soon as they come out. So if you don't want to miss next week's finale episodes, do not forget to subscribe. But if you like this video, please leave a like, it really means a lot. Thank you all for watching, and as always, stay adventurous.